Hello, hello, and welcome back to the Musings of Mavery channel. I'm Mavery, and today we're going to be watching Astra Lost in Space Episode 6. So, uh, last episode where we left off, we had a little bit of a standoff, if you will, a cliffhanger uh, between Luca and Ogre, which, of course, tr is trying to paint Ogre as the bad guy, but um, it's probably not going to be the case, right? I suspect it has something to do with their parents, um, potentially, uh, especially since Luca's father is actually a p politician, uh, it seems fairly reasonable to assume that this is a case of some corrupt politician, whatnot, and maybe it has something to do with the school as well, because Ogre's father is also one of the vice principals of the school they attend. Um, but in any case, I do believe that Ogre is not going to be the you know the actual quote unquote bad guy. In fact, I'm not even sure if there's actually going to be a bad guy within all these main characters. I presume not, but but they could be um, something, a big plot twist as well. I'm just not expecting it to go that way, uh, judging from what I can see. Um, anyways, besides that, um, what else? Oh, uh, they actually, since I did look a little bit to see uh, at the beginning part, as I usually do, so they did start off with the opening, the actual opening this time, the opening theme, um, where I'm not going to go through it again because it's pretty much what we've seen before. However, they did change a little bit in that Yuhan now has her short hair design and, you know, no glasses, right? Uh, as we got last episode when she sort of changed her style. Now, I'm not going to go through that entirely, but you guys can feel free to check out the opening and watch those, uh, take note of those differences. Beyond that, actually, I guess the reason, the main reason, well, I don't know, but probably one of the reasons why they also decided to uh, actually put the opening here uh, for this episode is because the song in question, Star Frost, I believe, uh, is on sale today. Or, yeah, it should be on sale today. So, if you guys w would like to, you can go check that out. I'll also link the MV, the music video, down below so you guys can actually see the actual music video. Now, as far as I can see, or uh, as far as I, I've read, it seems to follow a similar... So, I think it's written or it's shot in sort of a similar fashion in relation to the story. Um, so, it's space-themed, etc., etc. So, again, feel free to check that out as well. But that is that, let us get into the actual episode. So anyways, like I said, I skipped the opening part. Let's just begin in the episode in three, two, one, play. All right, we will probably get to see some actual backstory. Really? Okay, investigating the senator. Hmm. 
that those are some words to live by you only go for teen life once like I wish I were more active during my teens But so, you shouldn't take it out on his son. Again, I kind of wish we could have, like, um, we could have seen more of Ogre's interactions with Luca. We'd only really got some from the last episode, where it seemed that they were sort of friends. That's some bad parenting right there. Oh wait, you're actually... Wait, you're actually a girl? <laughs> God damn. I kept thinking Luca was a girl this whole time. And then... I discovered that, hey, no, wait, he's supposed to be a guy. And now he's actually a girl. Oh my god. Okay. Brought you in? 
Okay. So that did get back to my, my original theory of how he was... Well... Again, thanks to some of you guys who did tell me that that's not going to be the crux of the situation, but I did kind of feel like maybe the DNA genome sequencing part would... Yeah, many of them all have issues with their parents, so... Maybe they were all... Cast away, in a sense? So that's why they bonded? So again, I'm just thinking about the implications of this, so here it is very clear that, you know, these two are not wanted by their families. And as I said last episode, it seems that a lot of the other parents don't have that uh, big of an interest in their children either, save for Ares' mom. Maybe you guys... <laughs> okay. You know what? I was just thinking of this last episode. When you see a place with this... That's like this... I just immediately think of um, the planet from Interstellar, right? The, the planet that was entirely made out of water. And I decided not to, not to pursue this uh, line of thinking later because um, I thought, well, there's an island here that grows stuff. I want to be a lone wolf.
<laughs> um, that should maybe translate more to hang in there. Okay, so now we're <laughs> so Luke is showing his streak as well. So next is Zach. Because corruption accusations are fairly normal. You know, you can't be a journalist with that kind of personality, you know? <laughs> oh, wait, you still... You still had it? Uh, yeah, resolve the situation. <laughs> okay, best of both worlds. <laughs> nice. 
mischievous, <laughs> mischievous streak to him. Okay, I like that. Here, aunt. Cutie. <laughs> 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 and Kenneth, of course, doesn't really care about all this. Okay, so maybe the next one is in regards to Shars. Oh, and she has photographic memory. Right. Okay. The Charis is not being entirely truthful either. But again, 10 bucks, he's not the enemy either. Like, I, I really don't think the so-called enemy is any one of them. Alright, anyways, um, that's episode 6. I'll see you guys in a second. Alrighty, so all in all, I would say this episode was pretty good. Um, the lines were definitely a little bit corny and whatnot, right? Um, especially at the very end. But still, I did like how they eventually, you know, all all made up, and um, they're now bond their bond is now closer to each other, right? And I do like the way that they handled Luca's character here, right? Uh, someone who is androgynous, uh, but they actually utilized it, right? And, which cannot be said of some other anime this season, which also feature androgynous characters. Um, but anyways, I, I feel like it's kind of funny because when I originally saw Luca, you know, from the first two episodes or so, I thought that Luca was a girl, and so I, I kept thinking, I kept grouping her with the girls, and then as time went on, I was like, no, wait a minute, she's doing stuff with the guys and, and whatnot, she's actually being treated as a male, so then I decided that Luca was a male, and now it seems that he is both. Right. But like I said, I do like how they actually utilize this trait of his character, right? He has a negative past uh, or there are complications in, in his life due to him having this sort of, um, you know, ambiguous sex, right? But now that he's fully embraced it and whatnot, he's able to uh, get the advantages of it. As we can see at the very end, he's able to be open about it, tease people about it, um, maybe, you know, um, you know, utilize his assets to his um, to his advantage and whatnot. So that overall just makes it, you know, it's an integral part of his character, right? It's not just there as an afterthought. And that is what I enjoyed about um, his character as a whole. And of course, his relation with Ogre as well. Um, again, I'm thinking that I'm a little bit sad that probably there is a lot more interactions between Ogre and um, 
and Udgar and um, Luca that we probably didn't see, uh, and that's probably in the manga or something. I haven't read it yet, so I don't know, but um, I do, I would have liked if they maybe had a little bit more interaction than what we just saw last episode, right, which is very, very brief. Um, yeah, so, and with that, we do learn a little bit more about this entire story, right? So, um, again, I guess it's kind of, uh, you know, it's kind of what I thought as well, but then not necessarily entirely true. So, uh, some of you guys were, were saying how, oh, it's not that big of a deal if Luca is adapted or, or anything. Now, I actually didn't think he was adapted. I actually thought he was the result of an extra mar marital affair. So, um... I thought there was going to be a scandal of some sort, and that is why the politician wanted the senator wanted to get rid of him, uh, something like that. But with the story as it stands right now, and especially with Zach also saying that, hey, this is you know relatively minor compared to the overall, you know, stuff that really um, makes it so you want to kill someone to keep a secret, right? A scandal, a scandal. It's not something that is irrecover irrecoverable from, right? So. Again, that's probably making, that's really making me rethink all the theories as well. And I wish we had a little bit more information on Luca's father, because he does seem, I do believe that he's probably one of the main centerpieces of all this, of this conspiracy and whatnot. But since we don't know anything else about his political affiliation, except for the fact that he's opposed to human genome sequencing, um, that doesn't really give me much to go on in terms of trying to guess why he's doing some things right now you know for some generic guesses you know you either it's either got to do something with money or power right and with power it's also easy to think of something that's more military related so perhaps that you know wormhole black hole thing in the jig um which uh blew them out into space in the first place maybe that is the result of some sort of military application uh, military weapon of some sort that is also a possibility and that it would indeed be perhaps um big enough that warrants killing somebody who's got a little bit too nosy, right? Now, the thing, again, we be, because we don't know enough information about Luca's father yet, uh, there's not really much that we can go on, but one thing that has sort of, you know, um, sort of uh, broken up all my theories and whatnot is the fact that it seems that Oregar's father, the vice president, actually did love his brother, his other son, right? And I was originally very convinced that uh, perhaps Luca's father and Urugar's father were actually working together, especially at the very end of, you know, during the episode where they appeared, where they both ended, you know, like, like it's tearing me apart, right? And saying nearly the exact same thing. Got me thinking maybe these two are working together of some sort. And definitely the vice president is still not off the hook yet. He's the one who's able to uh, actually... Um, arrange for all these students to be in one place and also we've got that mysterious uh, sunglass wearing dude right next to him as well right so these two are still related but it's it's kind of hard so perhaps the vice president didn't really like uh, Odegaard's brother as much as he said or something like that I don't know again um, probably we'll have to learn a little bit more later, right? Because, you know, with the cliffhanger this episode, it seems obvious that next episode we're probably going to learn more about Sharis. Uh, Sharis? Yeah, Sharis. Um, and what's his entire deal? Again, I don't believe that anybody on this ship is the enemy, um, so to speak, but they probably all have their own history, and then once we gain the history of all of them, maybe uh, there will be a pattern emerging that actually... Um, tells us the story, right? So we got Sheris next, and we still got Zack. We haven't heard his story yet. And I'm actually guessing that probably eventually we're going to loop all around and get learn more about Ares' past as well. Because for being the main female lead here, we actually know very little of her, right? She's not really said much about herself that's actually significant or of particular revel relevance. And another thing I'm basing this on is because during the opening, we actually see um, Ares in her sort of like her childhood as well. So a younger version of Ares. So I do think that probably it might eventually tie up, you know, I wouldn't be entirely surprised if in the end all of this was actually about Ares instead, right? Like maybe it's entirely just a plot to get rid of her. Um, that's also a possibility, I guess. Um, but like I said, that that is pure speculation. I have nothing to base that on except for some meta-analysis about you know how a work would generally go or whatnot because we don't have enough information yet. 
So, anyways, that's been Asha Lost in Space, episode 6. I will see you guys next week. Uh, which, actually, the next episode might be a bit delayed. I'm going to be on another trip again overseas, so... Yeah, I'm probably not going to be able to make it on time. Give her, well, maybe, maybe not. You guys will know once Wednesday rolls around and if my videos are uploaded or not. But anyway, stay tuned. I will at least get them out in a couple of days or whatnot uh, if, if they are delayed. So stay tuned, and I'll see you guys next time. Until then, bye-bye.